Hi, I'm Andrea Anthony, and you're watching Eat, Drink, and Bake with Andrea. Today, I'm doing a roasted red pepper soup. I'm doing cedar plank grilled salmon. And for side dish, I'm doing farro with a tahini dressing with a little bit of lemon there. So let's get going. Roasted red pepper soup. Let's talk a little bit about our ingredients. I'm starting off with onions. Now these are Vidalia onions. I like them on the sweeter side for this recipe. And of course we have our red peppers. These are red bell peppers. And we have some fresh basil, little bit of cream, and of course our chicken stock. We're using a little bit of turbinado sugar to help brown those onions and butter. A Little bit of olive oil. And we're using thyme as well as our herb. On these peppers, we're going to slice them. We don't want any seeds in there. So we're just going to slice the red part. And what's most important is we want to flatten them because what we're going to do is put them under the broiler and we're roasting. We want to get those skins off. So we're going to cut them like we did and we're just going to flatten them a little bit. And the reason for that is the flame will be right on top of those peppers and we want them to cook evenly, as best as possible. So you just kind of give them a little bit of a push down on your board, just like so, making them as flat as you can. All right, so we're just going to arrange those on a baking sheet and I've oiled it just a little bit. And we're just slicing off that red part and the very bottom. Okay, and once again, just giving it a little bit of a press down and we're gonna flatten that as best as possible. And we're arranging them in a single layer on the pan. So if you have to use a second pan, if your pan's not big enough, that's okay too. You can do this in stages. All right, so it looks like we're ready to go. We're gonna go over the broiler and make sure your broiler is nice and hot and we're gonna throw those inside and wait for them to get nice and black on the top. Let's take a peek at our peppers. We want to make sure that they're cooking evenly. Okay, so I'm going to give that a little rotation here because there are a couple of them that aren't browning as evenly as the other ones. So, you know, you want to check on them halfway through. Just give it a little bit of a spot check, and if you see that they're cooking unevenly, you may want to rotate your pan. They only have a couple more minutes to go, and then we'll be pulling them out. Time to pull our peppers out. See how they're blackened on top? We know they're done. Now they're extremely hot, so we're going to let them sit here for a few minutes to cool down, and then we'll go back to the island. Our peppers broiled, they're nice and charred. Now we're going to put them in a plastic bag. Now what this will do is they will sit for a while, get moist, and it will be easy to get that peel off. So you wanna wait till they're somewhat cooled, but not completely because you sort of need that steam in there a little bit just to loosen the, the skins on them. So that's what we're doing now. And you can see they're still kind of hot, but that's okay. They're not too hot, not right out of the broiler. So they've sat here for a few minutes. Now we're just going to close our bag and you're gonna let them sit there for about 10, 15 minutes and then the skins will just come off really easily and we'll go back to our stove and put all our ingredients together. Looks like our peppers are good. Let's check it out here. Okay, so you'll need a little bowl. Okay, see how easily these come off? We're just gonna peel the black part off. Skins come right out. Now you'll need a little bit of a hand towel next to you because this does tend to get a little messy. Okay, so you can see, it comes right off and in the bowl it goes. And that was the process of really sweating them in the bag. So they want to be warm so the skins come off easily. Okay, so you can see how nice that is. Again, the charred part just peels right off. All right, so we're going to finish peeling these. We'll get them all in our bowl, and then we'll move over to the stove, and we'll put all our ingredients together. We're 
we're ready for the onions. So we're gonna start with some olive oil and some butter, salted butter. We're going to get that melting and then we'll be throwing our onions in. So we have this pan which has been heated and you can hear it sizzling, getting ready for those onions. All right. All right, let's throw those in now. So we have our nice Vidalia onions with a rough chop. Now, what we're looking for is to sweat the onions. We don't need them to be too brown. We're gonna get those onions to the point where they're nice and glistening. Maybe a slight brown, but certainly not caramelized for the soup. So I'm tossing them around a little bit to get the oil and the butter all over those onions. Okay, let's put a little salt and a little bit of pepper. Toss around and we're gonna let those cook for a bit and we'll keep stirring them up to make sure that they cook evenly. Now we're gonna add a little bit of our turbinado sugar. A little bit of raw sugar in there, give that a stir. And I would say we need about another five, seven minutes on that and then we'll be good. Onions are looking good. Okay, it's time for our peppers. And you know, it's such a simple recipe. There are so few ingredients in this. I love it. And they work so well together. So we have our fire roasted peppers in there with the skins off. Our onions, which we're mixing around. Now we're gonna throw in our fresh basil. Give that a toss. And of course, our chicken stock. Now you can use vegetable if you like. I prefer chicken stock in this dish, but I know people who are vegetarians that would rather not have chicken stock, so it certainly is okay to switch it out. And our thyme. Okay, give that a mix. We're going to bring the heat up to a boil, then we're going to reduce it to a simmer, and we're gonna let it simmer so the flavors combine for about 20 to 25 minutes. Our soup's been simmering. Okay, now we're gonna give it a mix. Now the last part of this toward the end of the soup is to add our heavy cream. Okay, and we're gonna stir that up. Now at this point, it really doesn't have to cook anymore once you've added the heavy cream. Uh, we will adjust for salt and pepper at the end, but what we're going to do now is we're going to take it off the flame and we're going to bring the heat down just a little bit so we can blend it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna let our soup cool down a little bit. We'll walk it over to the island. We'll bring down the temperature just a little bit so that we can blend it and then we'll move on from there. Our soup is nice and cooled. Next step is to blend it all together. Now you'll need an extra pot because we're working out of this pot into the blender and then we're gonna pour our soup that's been blended back into a clean pot. So let's start with some of the, the body of our soup, which is the, the peppers, the onions, the basil. Okay, we'll get that going in there. And we'll get some of the, the liquid. You see, it's still a little warm, so I'll tell you what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take the lid off so that some of the steam can escape. You don't want the pressure building up in your blender. And you don't wanna go more than about halfway. That's a little more than halfway, but we should be good. Now, when in doubt, start at a very, very low speed, and we can always increase it. Okay, I think that's about good. Okay, let's give it a, yeah, we're looking good. So into the pot it goes. And we'll just continue this process until everything is well blended, and we will transfer it to our clean pot. We're well blended over here, so now we're just gonna walk our pot back to the stove and we're gonna simmer it on a very low flame for about 10 more minutes. 
Now we mentioned adjusting our seasoning. So let's give it a taste and we're gonna see if it needs any more salt and pepper. I'm gonna say it needs a little bit more salt. Okay, pepper is good. Um, that's something that you can add at the table to taste, but a little more salt and we're good to go. So almost done. Uh, we're gonna move over to the island in a couple of minutes and we'll get our soup plated. We have our roasted red pepper soup with basil undertones and a little bit of cream. It's just wonderful. And I will point out that we're not straining it out. This is a hearty soup. It's got some really good fiber, has a little bit of texture in it. It's just wonderful. So the next thing is to move on to our farro salad. So let's get started on that. Our side dish today is our nutty tasting farro. Now farro has become very popular, but it's by no means new. It's an ancient grain from Northern Italy, and it's just wonderful. It has a great nutty flavor and a great texture. So we're gonna use that in our recipe today. Let me talk a little bit about the ingredients though. We have the salad component and we also have our dressing. So, beginning with our dressing, we're going to use one of my favorite products. Now, it's a lemon tahini dressing. This is called, it's actually organic, seed and mill tahini. Now, let me show you this tahini, and I'm gonna tell you why it's my favorite. Look at that consistency. It's perfect for sauces, for recipes like this, for dressings. I absolutely love it, and the flavor is wonderful. I use it in a lot of my cooking that requires tahini. So we're using that, and our tahini dressing starts, of course, with our tahini. It has some fresh garlic in it. We're using a light oil. Now, in this case, I'm using some avocado oil, but you can use sunflower oil. You can even use macadamia oil, anything that doesn't really impart much flavor. We're using a little bit of salt, no pepper in this, fresh lemon juice, and a little bit of water for consistency. That's our dressing part of it. Now the salad itself is our farro. We have a little bit of chopped arugula. That's to add a little peppery flavor to it. And for texture, we have some zucchini, which is chopped. We also have fresh basil, parsley, salt and pepper, and we're finishing it off with cola vita lemon infused olive oil. It makes this dish. We put it in the very end and it just makes the dish perfect. And we finish also with a little bit of hot pepper. So those are our ingredients. Let's start with our dressing. We're going to add our tahini, okay, to our bowl. I mean, it's so simple. Very few ingredients here. Our garlic. Oil, just a little bit of salt, and we have a little bit of lemon juice and a little bit of water. Okay, so we're just going to mix that up, and we're gonna let that sit for a while. All of those flavors are going to mesh nicely. They're gonna blend and marinate into each other. So you give it a good stir until it combines. So this is the consistency we're looking at. See how it's nice and creamy? That's what we're looking for in this dressing. It's very simple. Okay, let's let that sit. We're gonna let the flavors combine a little bit. Now the next step is to get the farro going. So we're gonna move over to the stove. We have some water boiling right now and we're gonna throw our farro in. We're at a rapid boil right now. So we're going to add our farro. Give it a stir. We're gonna bring it up to a boil and then down to a simmer and we're gonna let it simmer until the farro is nice and tender. Our farro's been cooking. Now let's just give it a little taste and see where we are here. Okay, we're good. It's a chewy grain and it's not like rice. It doesn't absorb all the water. So you can see there's more water left in the pan. What we're going to do is walk over to the sink. We're going to drain it transfer it to another bowl to come down with a temperature, and then we'll start putting our ingredients together.
Our farro has been at room temperature. Okay, so we're looking good. It's a little warm, which is fine because this salad is served warm. So let's begin. I think we're gonna start, let's start with this. We're gonna put our zucchini in. And that's a nice dice. Mix that up. And now for the chopped arugula. Once again, the arugula adds a little peppery flavor to it. So you have that nutty taste of the farro, you have the crunch of the zucchini, and a little bit of a peppery taste from the arugula. So mix all that together. Now let's add our basil, a little sweet component, and some fresh chopped parsley. Okay, let's toss that all up. Now we have our dressing, a tahini lemon dressing. So in that goes, and we'll mix that up. You know, the tahini adds such a nice texture to it. The creaminess of the tahini dressing just meshes really well. And it's such a healthy grain. You know, it's really high in protein, it's high in fiber, and also a lot of minerals and vitamins. So it's really a healthy grain. It's delicious, has a nice nutty flavor, and it's a great side dish. Now, I chose this as a salad because it really needs to sit for a while, and it's really nice when all those flavors marinate at room temperature. We are serving it warm. So once we get this all finished, we're going to let it sit, and then we're gonna move on to the salmon. So it's perfect timing. Okay, this will be all finished and ready, so. Okay, so you can see how that's all nicely mixed. Now we're adding just a little bit of hot pepper. And we're going to add the zest from one lemon. Okay, just dealing with the rind here, not the pithy part, which is the white. The lemon adds just such a nice element to this dish. Okay, let's get all that zest going there. And now for the best part of the dish, we have our lemon infused olive oil. Start by just drizzling some over the top. And we're gonna toss that. You can see how I'm folding it. We wanna make sure everything is nice and blended. Okay, we're gonna add just a little bit more. Okay, I'd actually like just a little bit more hot pepper. And again, this is to taste. I have a spicy palate, so I like, I like hot food. Okay. All right, that's it. Well blended. You can see how beautiful this salad is. It's got texture going, it's got flavor, I mean, it's just wonderful. So let's let this sit at room temperature and I'm gonna get set up for our salmon. Today's main course is our cedar plank grilled salmon. So we have our salmon here, and what we're going to do is we're going to rub it with a little bit of olive oil, and we have our dry rub. Now our dry rub is basically onions, spices, a little garlic, and of course our dill, and a little bit of lemon. We're also using Dijon mustard, and we're gonna finish it off with that after we've rubbed it, and it's going to sit for a while, and then we're going to put it on the grill, and it's gonna be just wonderful. Before we start our dry rub, let's just talk a little bit about the cedar plank. The cedar plank is cedar board, cedar wood, and the best place to buy this is in a seafood store or online. You want something food grade. Now, the other thing you have to know is it has to soak at least six to 12 hours. Now this has actually been soaking overnight. Very important for the wood to be moist or it'll catch on fire on your grill, pretty much char the whole dish. So soaking is the main part of the recipe, has to be done, there's no shortcuts. Now, in terms of what you soak it in, this has actually been soaking in wine. I have a Chardonnay in there and it's been soaking, actually I soaked overnight, so if you have that kind of time, it works out really well. And what happens is the infusion of the wine into the board imparts a nice flavor to the fish. 
Also, you have that smoky flavor that comes from the cedar, so it's a wonderful combination of flavors. Now, the other thing I want to mention is if you don't want to use wine, you can use water. Um, you can also use apple cider, okay, I've seen that, or orange juice. So it depends on the kind of flavor you'd like to impart to the, to the seafood. Sort of up to your creative um, feelings about what you like and the flavors that you're good with. So whatever you like to do, just make sure you soak it long enough so that all of that moisture is absorbed into your wood. Okay, now, what we're going to do is we're going to score the salmon. Now, I'm gonna give it a score in the middle. We're not gonna cut all the way through. And by the way, let me mention that this is skin on. Very important skin on when you're grilling. Um, you need that barrier and it also keeps the salmon a lot more moist, so that's important. Okay, so we're just scoring, scoring the top. Okay, good, not cutting all the way through. Now, before we put the rub on, you wanna just rub your salmon with some olive oil. Okay, so kind of just go all the way around that. And you're just gonna give it a coating of olive oil, okay? And now, we're using our rub. And that's just going on top. Now, you don't have to do the sides, um, just, just across the top of the salmon. Okay, and we're actually just rubbing that in. And it's adhering nicely. Nicely coated. All right, great. Now, let's add the mustard. Now, this is a Dijon mustard. And it not only adds flavor, but it adds some moisture. Okay, so very carefully, you wanna rub that right on top. Now, by scoring it, we're also allowing some of that flavor to move into the salmon. And it will help you when you're ready to cut the salmon. Okay, because this is going on our grill hole. All right, so we, got our, we have our mustard. And we have our dry rub on there. And we're looking good. Next step, we're popping this in the refrigerator for 20 to 30 minutes, no more. Okay, so let's get that in there. And then we'll, in the meantime, we'll get our grill going. Step one, we're putting our plank right on the grill. Now we're gonna close that up a little bit and we're looking at a medium flame, low to medium, about 350. So we're gonna put that plank on, let it get a little bit hot, and then we move the salmon on. We've had our cedar plank on for a couple of minutes and now it's time for the salmon. So something I wanna point out, we're putting skin side down and we're just putting that right on to the plank board. You wanna close your grill now, because you're dealing with a flame, you sort of have to sit with it a little bit. You want to monitor, if you have a temperature gauge, monitor your temperature. Now, we opened it up, the temperature dropped a bit, so I'm going to make that a little higher, um, and it might go too high. So you sort of have to sit with it and make sure your temperature stays at an even low to medium flame, and you might have to play with it a little bit. So we're going to let that sit a little bit. We'll let the temperature come up, and we'll be checking our salmon along the way. So we've closed our grill. Uh, the temperature dropped a bit, okay, so we're just going to let that come up, which will happen because our top is closed. We need to sit with a little bit. You want to keep an eye on that temp if you have one. If not, keep an eye on your flame. It will fluctuate based upon the weather. It could be a little windy. Flames are very inconsistent, so you sort of have to sit with this one and keep an eye on your salmon. But we have a good 10 minutes that we can let it start cooking. So we'll check back with that in around 10 minutes. Okay, so we see we have a little too hot, little flame going on there. Have some water with you. And if that happens, just give it a couple of drops. A couple of drops on the cedar plank. Okay, so you see it's not a problem where the fish is because there's enough moisture there. But you got a little flame going here, a little too high. So we just drop a little bit of water on it. Just drop the water on the plank, not the fire. Let's give a little look here and see how we're doing. Now, if you take a knife and you just kind of pull the fish aside, I can see that it's still red on the inside, very fleshy. It's not done yet. It's starting to cook nicely, but we have some more time and we need to put the lid back on and let it go a little bit longer. Okay, I think we're looking good. Okay, I'm taking a peek. 
and it's nice and opaque in the middle, which tells us it's time to take it off the grill. Okay. Now, we'll take a little more of our water. All right. You might need two spatulas for this. Now the skin should stick to the plank. So let's see, let's try to do this very carefully. Okay, right onto our plate. Perfect. And you can see most of the skin has stuck to the cedar plank, which is fine. All right, so our grill is off. We're gonna move inside and we'll continue with our dish. We're gonna let our cedar plank salmon rest a little bit. And while we're doing that, let's get our lemon ready. And we're just gonna cut nice slices. Nice thin slices that will go across the top. And by resting, we're sort of letting the juices redistribute. And it's gonna be moist and tender, it's just wonderful. There we have it. We have our dill lemon rub, which was our dry rub, and we had our Dijon mustard, our cedar plank, we grilled it, and it's ready to go. Perfectly done, nice and moist. We have our meal all prepared. We have our roasted red pepper soup, our cedar plank grilled salmon, and we have our farro salad with lemon and tahini. You've been watching Eat, Drink, and Bake with Andrea. Please follow me on social media at Eat, Drink, and Bake. And for more information about my spice line, you can go to eatdrinkandbake.com. And remember, it's all about great ingredients, step-by-step -step recipes, and enjoying time with friends and family. Until next time.